happy that you are here and are here to join me this morning. I'm Dr. Susan, and we're here for Play and Learn. Today, we're going to take a look at colors in a little bit different way. But we are going to look at a book called Chameleon's Crazy Colors. It's a cute story. It's a fun story. And, and then we'll look, look at some stuff about colors. All right? So let's look at the story and then see what we can find out about why there were so many colors. All right. Chameleon's Crazy Colors. Nicole, Nicola Grant and Michael Terry. So I'm assuming they're the author and the artist that created the pictures. So let's take a look. Deep in the rainforest, all was not well. Chameleon was having trouble with his colors. Hmm, he said crossly. I'm sitting on a yellow flower, so I should be yellow. But look at me, I'm red. <coughs> he looks a little bit distressed. Chameleon hopped onto a stone and turned blue with pink spots. Walking through the grass, he went orange. It was all horribly wrong. Monkey and meerkat strolled by. You look a little bit off color today, they said. I'm in a color muddle, Chameleon cried. I knew I shouldn't have eaten that funny looking bug last night. What if Lion comes prowling? If I can't change colors, he'll see me and eat me up. Easy, said Monkey. We'll help. No problem, said Meerkat. Close your eyes and think yourself a color, said Meerkat. I am yellow. I am yellow, chanted Chameleon. He started prancing up and down, but whoa! Chameleon slipped on Monkey's old banana skin and skidded into a mango tree. Splat! A big ripe mango fell on his head. Ouch! I'm yellow now, said Chameleon crossly. Well, that didn't work. I need another plan. Easy, said Monkey. No problem, said Meerkat. Later, as Chameleon lay deep in thought on his favorite branch, two figures tiptoed up. Lion is coming, they shouted. It's Lion! Ah! Chameleon tried to turn green and went purple. He leapt towards some purple flowers to hide. Splat! Chameleon fell into the river, coughing and sputtering. He scrambled aboard a floating log. Only joking, shouted Monkey and Meerkat. We thought if we gave you a scare, colors would work perfectly, or properly, and perfectly. <laughs> but apparently that isn't what happened. That night, Monkey and Meerkat met in secret to make more plans. What a great idea, Monkey whispered. Let's do it. By dawn, the pair were ready for action. This disguise is really scary, said Meerkat. The fright will definitely make Chameleon's wacky colors work. Stand by, hushed Monkey. Chameleon's coming. With a great rumble roar, Monkey leaped out. Help, it's Lion! Camille gasped. He, he tried to turn green, but he went red. Only me, laughed Monkey. Just trying to help again. Great disguise, said Chameleon. Shame it didn't work. My, my. But Monkey and Meerkat wouldn't give up. Lion, they shouted as Chameleon munched his crunchy lunch. Chameleon almost choked on his beetle. Instead of going brown, he went blue. Lion, screeched Meerkat as Chameleon slurped a drink. Chameleon hid amongst the pink flowers. But everyone saw him. He was bright orange. It's Hopeless, Chameleon sighed. Hmm. Not so easy, said Monkey. It's a bit of a problem, said Meerkat. 
Chameleon flopped onto the shade, under, into the shade, feeling ter terribly worried. Nothing worked. What would he do if Lion really came? Just then, Meerkat and Monkey shot past him. They looked scared, very scared. Lion, they squeaked. Ha ha, you don't fool me, Chameleon laughed. But just then, he heard a great grrrr. Chameleon's face froze. He looked up and he gulped a big gulp. Lion was towering over him. What are you, said Lion, licking his lips. A, 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 a red spotted thingy, Chameleon sputtered. No, I'm pink and purple. Uh, now I'm a little red and blue and purple. Lion looked puzzled. Suddenly, Chameleon had a brain wave. That's a brain idea. I've got funny coloritis, Chameleon told Lion. Swallow me and you'll get awe and itchy tummy. Funny coloritis, growled Lion, backing away as fast as he could. Are you sure? Oh, yes, Chameleon said. Eat me and you'll end up looking crazy colored like me, too. Yikes, gasped Lion, quaking with fear. I'm off. And he disappeared in a cloud of dust. Three cheers for clever Chameleon, laughed Monkey. He got rid of the lion forever. Hooray for Chameleon's funny colors, Meerkat cried. And Chameleon was very happy. He went pink with pleasure. With bright blue and orange spots, of course. <laughs> the end. Well, would you like that problem? Would you like to be able to be something that turned colors all the time? <laughs> anyway, the, his friends, Meerkat and Monkey, certainly were willing and able to be able to try and help him the best they could. Their ideas were okay, and sometimes, like, have you ever hiccuped a whole lot and couldn't stop and somebody said boo to you to try and make you stop hiccuping? That's one of those things that people figure, you know, if you just get startled, it'll stop the hiccups. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. And I guess they have the same idea, just on a different level, to, um, to help Chameleon so that he would do his normal thing. And Chameleons, the, their colors is to keep them protected from their um, enemies, so to speak, or the animals that are going to, that want to eat them. And you have them for lunch and dinner. So he's, his colors was one of his protections that nature gave him. But also, for us, we could use colors to describe how we're feeling, like emotions. We used a lot of emotions with, with Chameleon because he, you know, when he was blue, it usually had to be by something that was blue. If he was yellow, he had to be by something that was yellow. If he was in the grass, he turned green. That's so that, uh, that he can stay safe. So colors for him were very important. Colors for us have a lot of other ways in which they can help us, too. The uh, colors are, are sometimes when you get embarrassed, your face gets a little pink or red, which kind of tells people that you're embarrassed. Um, and so when we get angry, depends on how our face looks. And a lot of people call color angry either black or red because sometimes that's what they, that's what they think the colors mean. And colors are your emotions. When you're happy, what color do you think of when you're happy? Do you think of maybe yellow or gold or something like that that's nice and bright and, and just shines all over the place? Yeah. And if you think of red and green, what do you think about? Well, you may think about Christmas because that's colors that represent Christmas. And maybe if you think about uh, Hanukkah, you would think of blue and silver. That's represents Hanukkah, those colors. And also, if we take it, that idea and look at the colors, we think about the seasons of the year. In the winter, what color do we think about? Well, we think about white from, for snow. Of course, if you don't live in the area of snow, you might think of blue for rain, depending on where you live. So those colors. And, and summer 
or fall or spring, we usually think of all kinds of colors. You know, the colors of flowers and trees and leaves and things like that. Those are greens and reds and yellows. All those bright, beautiful colors talk about spring when the world is waking up again, the plant life. And then when summer gets here, we still think of blue and we think of yellow for the sun and the sky and the ocean or the, or the water and lakes and rivers is the blue. And then we also, as the, as the season goes down further, closer to September, we start seeing the trees. They start turning different colors uh, in different parts of the country. Some colors, like back east, the trees turn yellow and red and orange, burnt orange and a brown color. They're beautiful colors. So those are fall colors. So there we have the fall. And th that tells us that, gee whiz, the seasons are changing. In some states, like California and Florida and stuff like that. We don't have those huge color changes because we don't have huge temperature changes with the weather. So it depends on where you live as to whether you get to see all of those. But the trees know it, and they just automatically do that. There's not somebody that goes around and gives it different fertilizer to make it turn different colors. So with the chameleon, their colors protect them. And of course, he had the big challenge that he didn't know what was wrong with his colors, but they certainly weren't working. And he had two lovely friends that tried to help him solve that. Well, I thought it would be kind of fun. I have um, some things here. I call these cupcake crayons. And these are crayons that I'm, I didn't make the crayons. I changed them, <laughs> or as I transformed them, as my grandson says. I transformed them into a different shape. And you can kind of see the little ridges here. And I'm going to tell you how I do that because it's kind of a thing that maybe mom would, mom would like to help you do as a project is that crayons that are broken or all gone are little tiny pieces that you've colored with a whole lot. You like that favorite color and you used it and it's about this big now. You like that? So you take those, you can take those crayons and take all your broken crayons and the crayons that are really short that you don't like holding anymore and you take all the paper off. Okay, that's one of the things you do. Then you get the job of being able to break them into little tiny pieces. And um, you also have to have mom help you with this project because it has to do with this, the oven. So you'll need to have mom help you. So, but I'm going to finish telling you how, how I created these, but I'm going to show you what we're going to create for ourselves. It's a fun project, but it has a lot to do with unveiling or discovering or uncovering colors. All right? So I have a piece of cardstock. It's a little thicker paper. It's right here. It's white. And then I have my cupcake crayons that are right here. And I am going to do color. And you press really hard because you want a dark, dark color. And you can do it in circles. You can do it in stripes, whatever you would particularly like to do. But you want to cover the whole piece of paper like this. Okay, it's fun coloring. You're not going to color in between the lines or anything else. So it's just kind of, kind of like scribbling if that's what you want to call it. So there's orange, and this is blue. You just want to cover as much of the white as you can. Okay, and it doesn't matter what direction you color in. You can go in this direction, this direction. It doesn't matter. This is just kind of covering the sheet with lots of colors. And then you can go to another color and do that. So you want to do this. But the other things that colors are really fun for is that they, uh, depending if you have a very favorite color, they talk about your feelings. And when you, ever, when you color pictures in coloring books, do you pick colors that you like all the time? And there's some colors that you don't pick at all because you don't particularly like them. And we all have our favorite colors. Okay, so now we're going to do pink. Pink's a little lighter, so we'll go over the. But you're going to, you can do it, like I said, any way you want. And even if the colors um, swing into each other, and maybe you drag a color in, in, into the other color, that doesn't matter. It doesn't hurt anything. Let's see, we're doing this. And now, whoa, oh, I did orange already. Do this color blue. Oh, that's the same color. Ha ha. So you won't use that one. <laughs> Let's do green. So then we have green. 
And if you don't want to use such a big piece of paper, you don't have to. It was just easier to show you so you could actually see. But colors are amazing things. You can mix colors together and create uh, all kinds of really cool pictures. And as you mix colors, like you know when you mix paint colors, if you use certain colors together, you make a new color. And there's this thing called a color wheel. I don't know if you've ever seen one. But the color wheel, I guess I don't want to use that one because it's too close to the, they're, they're seeing it. This is tricky too because these colors all look like kind of the same. Let's move over there, it's a little bit more blue. I don't think we did yellow, let's do yellow. It's in yellow. But you basically want to cover the whole piece of paper, okay? So you're doing that. But the other cool part about, and I love to color. I have my own coloring books at home. And I sit and color with my grandsons. But it's, it's a fun thing to do. It's very creative because nobody's telling you what color you have to color with. You can just kind of do whatever you want. And if you go over other colors, it's like this. Okay? So, what you're going to do is we're going to reveal these colors. Okay, I think I pretty much got the paper covered. Okay. What do you think when I, I'm going to tell you, go back to the story for just a minute. What do you think went through the chameleon's mind when, when the lion was standing there? He had to try and figure out a way so that the lion wasn't going to uh, have him for lunch. And he was very clever to come up with that. Now the next color that you go to, and I'm going to take the paper off, is you're going to take a black crayon, and now we're going to do a different size of crayon. Take a black crayon, and you're going to cover the whole thing with black. And I just broke the crayon, but that's okay. So you're going to cover the whole thing with black. And if you're, if you're coloring like this on your table or anything like that, be sure to put a piece of paper down like I have so your colors don't accidentally get on the table. So you cover the whole thing with black. Okay, you can lay it on its side or... And you want to cover all of it with black. I hope you like black crayons. Because you're going to cover it like this. I'm probably not going to cover the whole thing, but you'll get the idea when I just do a little piece of it. I'll just color it really dark. And just keep going over it like this. So anyway, back to the chameleon. But he used his colors to the crazy colors that he was experiencing to his advantage, didn't he? He just decided, well, I'm going to have to figure out something to tell this lion so that he goes away and leaves me alone, seeing that my colors aren't aren't helping me any. So with his thought process and his ideas, he came up with color, funny coloritis, which the lion figured, well, I certainly don't want that. That would be very hard to explain running around the forest as a lion being a bunch of different colors, wouldn't it? So Chameleon used his ideas and his thoughts to change the circumstances that he was in and to make sure that he was still going to remain and continue to be safe. Okay, so I'm going to put that there. So while I finish this black part, or the black part of the, the coloring, but I wanted to share with you with the, as far as the story that he used his his thought processes and his ideas that he had about himself and put him to practice and created another way to be safe. So sometimes when we start an idea and it just doesn't seem to work out right or some issue is going on and we can't, we can't figure out how we're going to make something work, if we think about it, and he just called it a brainwave, and you can call it a brain idea or you can call it your imagination or any of those things, that helps you create ways in which to accomplish what it is you want to accomplish. He wanted to be safe. That's what he wanted. So that's what he did. This isn't as dark as a black. 
So anyway, we've got as much of this, I've got, don't have to cover much more. But you just continue coloring with your black until you can't see any colors anymore. Okay? So you just keep doing that. And then I'll finish telling you how you make the cupcake colors, cupcake crayons. So there we go. And you can do this on a smaller piece of paper, and it does get you very messy. Just to let you know that. Okay, I'm going to move my trash can out here a little bit so I can get some of this crayon off. No, put it back. Okay, put this back. We're going to use this section right here that we've got colored. Then you get a pointed stick. Okay? If you don't have a pointed stick, you can use something. You can use a pencil too if you want to. Something that you have a, a sharp pencil, you can do that too. So what you want to do is now we're going to unveil the colors because they're they're now they're all black. So you take your pencil and you just draw lines and you can create pictures by doing that. So let's, here we greatly created an eye. Or fish, I guess, if you want it to be a fish. <laughs> Depends on what you want. But there's the, you just keep removing the black crayon. Now, I know you can buy these kind of things in the stores. Uh, you know, that they have colors underneath them that, that you can uh, reveal different colors, but you can make your own. My suggestion is you use a smaller piece of paper, maybe like a, uh, folding it in half and then making it, doing it in a quarter, quarter of paper, and you get probably better coverage with your black crayon. Okay? So there's the, the fish. And I'm going to do a little bit more over here while I tell you the rest about the cupcake crayons. So in order to recycle your broken crayons, the crayons that you have down to a nub like that, that I just did with this black, is that you um, get a, a cupcake pan that mom makes cupcakes in. Make sure it's an old one and uh, it doesn't matter if, if um, some of the wax gets on it. So make sure it's an old one and mom doesn't care about it. Or you can go to the store and you can get the aluminum cupcake pan. They're, they're called disposable ones. They're, they're, I think the biggest one I've seen is six, with six cups in it, six little places. So you can buy that and then get paper cups, um, cupcake papers, you know, that mom puts inside before they put the cake filling inside of it. So the paper that goes around a cupcake. So you put that inside of each one of the cupcake spots. Then you take all of your bro broken crayons. I don't know whether you can see this one or not, but it looks like it has a pair of eyes, <laughs> downtrodden eyes, right here and right here. These are two crayons that didn't melt. See? Can you see that? Yes, I think you can. I'm not sure. But anyway, there's two crayons that didn't melt. So you break your crayons up as small as you can get them. The smaller you get them, the better off it is. Then. You take all the broken crayons, you turn the oven on, or mom turns the oven on, to 200 degrees, okay? And then you take, uh, you, you put your broken crayons in each one of the little cupcake uh, can areas, in each one of those, and uh, this is probably, I don't know how many, I think this is probably about seven or eight crayons in this blue one that I've got here. And then you put it in the oven, and you leave it there for probably about an hour, an hour and a half, maybe two hours, and all of the crayons begin to melt. It's, they say that it, the temperature to melt a crayon is 105 degrees. So uh, at 200, uh, it melts the crayons, but it doesn't burn because the wax can burn and makes a real stinky smell. So. My suggestion is when you do this, if you want to try this and it's okay with mom to, to uh, recycle your crayons, is that just have, your, have a, get the kitchen window open or, you know, so that you get some air circulating. Uh, because the, the, as, the, as the crayons melt, there is a little bit of a smell. All right? So once they're done, 
Then you take them out and you uh, let them completely cool and then you peel the uh, cupcake paper off of your crayon and now you have a cupcake crayon. So it's a way to cir circulate or cycle. A big box like this, see the big box full of crayons? Big box like that to that. <laughs> so if you have a bunch of broken crayons or there's colors that you just don't ever use, that you might even be very creative and mix other crayons together, other broken crayons together to see what kind of interesting colors you get. Like this one, I did green and yellow. I had two shades of green and yellow. You can see on the back of the, um, let's see, let me get something more white so you can see on the back. So you can see on the back, there's like a light green, a dark green, and kind of a blue green in there on the back of that. So when you color, you're going to get, you're going to get this color. It's a greenish yellow color. That's the color you're going to get. And if you go on this side, you're going to get a different color. So that's a fun way to do it too. Okay? So there's some ways that maybe during school, during uh, your school projects and things when you have time and you want to kind of do a science experiment, <laughs> you can do that. So take a half a box of your crayons and melt them down to that size. But remember, always ask mom to help you. And this is kind of what our chameleon did. He, t he was, his head was one color and his body was another and his feet were another. His tail was another, if you notice that in the story, that his tail was one color and then his, his back legs and bottom were another color and his middle was different and his head was different. That's kind of what this is too. And it's just kind of a fun way to transform your crayons into something different. Mix your colors, makes it fun, and uh, be sure to have your mom with you and uh, supervising when you go ahead and decide to do uh, the cupcake crayons, all right? But it's fun, and I believe mom can probably get on uh, Google and look up um, melting crayons. Uh, she could put cupcake crayons in there and see what comes up. I got this recipe years and years and years ago. So I'm pretty sure it's probably still out there. And it'll give, you de give mom detailed directions as to how you do this. So you be sure you don't do anything that's going to cause any harm. All right? So that's one of the ways. And then here you can write messages, draw pictures, you do a flower. You got a flower going here. You can do flowers. And it's just kind of fun. And when you have all the different shades, it makes the different colors, which is a fun project too. And you just have a sharp stick or a sharp pencil. And then just rub all that off. <clears throat> and then you get the different colors for the flower. So a good, a good practice to do when you're, gonna, when you're making this on... Um, a smaller piece of paper. It's like if you want to create a card to send to somebody, you can just do quarter it and cut it in half. And then you can uh, do the same idea with your card, which is really kind of fun. And it's a, un it's a neat way to make uh, something very creative just for yourself and a good way to give something somebody your talent that you have in coloring and creating new and fun designs. All right? So that's our, our projects for today and our story. I hope you enjoyed the story, and um, I know I love the colors that were in the book. The colors are just beautiful in that particular book, um, and I believe I got that book on Amazon. So I, got, I get most of my books that I use for our uh, Play and Learn series um, on Amazon, and I have a new series to start us out with uh, next week, so we have some cool new books to take a look at. So you guys have a wonderful week. Thank you for joining me, and enjoy creating your own rub-off pictures, just like that. All right, thanks very much. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you again soon. <laughs> Take care. Bye.